Hello and welcome back to my basement and we have a, another component tester here. This is just for capacitors and inductors and I already have this transistor testers. I will give you a link to my other video when I build this one. It's very good. You can test transistor diodes and so on. It also can check capacitors and inductors. But the problem is it's not good at measuring low values because the lowest value this one can measure in uh, capacitors. I have to check my cheat. Uh, the transistor tester, which is called a TT uh, caps. Its lowest value is 25 microfarad and in inductors it can go down to 0 0.01 milli Henry. Hope the pronounce words are correct. This one, the SKU, let's see what it's called. 22 SKU 226140. I will link it in the description if one bite. It's the Highland or Heeland. I do not know how to pronounce the name. Uh, circuit in a kit. And you can measure down from one microfarad and from let's see or oh, inductors from 0.1 micro Henry so that's the lower values uh, it works a bit different because you have to switch the measuring system when you're doing electrolytic electrolytic capacitors but that's not a big problem so I will try to put this thing together and see if I get it work it's not that strange. Uh, I didn't get any manual, as usual, with Chinese kits. Uh, I found some instructions on the web, but yeah, it's not that hard. All the components are marked on the PCB, one side only. And there's a Atmega 8 processor for it, and an LCD screen over here. And really good, there's a socket for it. At mega and so on but I would do as usual start with the low components with resistors because there are some components you have to well do correctly so don't burn it out and I'm just going to show you some things when you power it up the first time so you can avoid burning too many components I hope so I'm gonna start soldering uh, resistors some diodes and other very low building components And I have made some progress. Uh, the resistors are in place. Uh, the capacitors, we have to uh, 22 microfarad. We have a 104, so that's 100 microfarads. It has to be that. I'm slow in the head today because I have a slight summer cold. Well, these are not any problems with components. And we have a these are polyester capacitors here, which will be next to relays and the small diodes. The only thing with the diodes turn them in the right direction. There's a marking on the PCB and that's the same as the small line on the diode. Nothing strange. Now we get over to some components that are a bit different. First of all, I have one leftover resistor, which is not a resistor. This is a small inductor. As you can see, it has a different color of the body and it goes next to these two one or four. This 10 micro Henry up here. That's this one. Nothing that strange. Uh, we also have an inductor which looks a bit strange and if I'm not totally wrong it should not matter which direction we turn it in but it goes down here 82 micro Henry. As of course we have a switch which I haven't picked up yet. And then we have three transistors uh, 29012 that's PMP transistors. Uh, check that you have the right transistors and the right orientation and you have the 8050 as an MPN transistor and also check the orientation 
And then we have our voltage regulator, 7805. So that's a five volt voltage regulator. It's going here, it's going flat like this. You have to bend the legs down because we could put the LCD display on top. So that's not strange. And we have the smoothing capacitor for the voltage regulator. Let's see, can I pull it off? Uh, paper, paper, get, go away. So this is a electric capacitor. So you have to check minus and minus on the PCB. So this is going this direction. And then as a, to have room for the LCD display, you have to pull up a bit. And then I'm using a screwdriver to bend it so that it stays down close to the PCB. Of course, when you solder it, check that it gets flat and nice. And that's almost all components. We have two capacitors left over. A tantalum capacitor electric. Well, I can't pronounce it. Uh, they are polarized. And if you look at them, normally there's a text that says 10 GF and they are 10 microfarad. And there's a small plus sign. That's a positive lead. In this case, it's the long leg. And if you look at the PCB, you see a line marking. That's the negative side. If I'm not totally wrong here, I'm trying to follow the PCB and check it. So if everything's correct, this means in this case, the left one, I'm going to have the markings towards me. So I have a positive leg on the inside and negative on the outside or to the left. And then the next one is the other way around. I'm going to have a marking away from me and a negative leg on that side and positive. If you turn this, these capacitors the wrong way around, the meter won't work. So these are a bit tricky and a little bit capacitor here and the inductor here. So I'm going to put the rest of stuff in place like the socket for Atmeg and the rest and also these components. So wish me luck. Now we are getting somewhere. Um, all the components in place. The things I've left over are the LCD display with its uh, pins and the Atmega and the battery connector. Uh, you're supposed to use this style and then the connection and it's very nicely marked on the PCB. It's negative on the outside, positive and a pin in the middle if you want to use that. But I don't want to need any loose stuff so I'm gonna save that one and take a 9 volt battery connector directly. I'm gonna run it through the hole in the corner up here and then we have three plates and if we turn around we can see that the top plate and the side plate are connected and are going to the middle pin of the 7805 so that's the ground and the other one here goes here and to the first pin, if you turn around the left pin, and that is our little input on the 705. So that is negative, negative and positive. So I'm going to use these two, I don't get confused, negative and positive. And the other thing that wasn't in the kit is, here is the connections for the components I want to test is uh, capacitors, inductors, common in the middle and a little bit capacitor to the right. This one I will not use D10, we're going to that later. Uh, but I have some normal stiffless listless width and uh, <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off five. As you can see I have to lose two of the legs and then the three left over will even function as easy ways to test components. So I'll do that and then we're going to power up and do initial power up testing. All 
Okay, we are gonna do a power up test. For that we need a 9 volt battery and no AdMag installed, no display installed. The rest is in place now with the sockets and everything and the op amp is even a Texas instrument op amp on the input so some quality products or components sorry uh, so let's see 9 volt battery uh, correct orientation whack it in place and no smoke and step one I don't know if you can see the meter uh, let's use the solder as a support stay put so I can read you too uh, let's check the 9 volts we have ground and we have positive and we have no voltage come on ah. nine point oh five volts good so that's our ground that's our nine volt let's check the 7805 we have 9.05 on the input and we have five volts on the output and the battery is not getting warm or anything so there shouldn't be any short circuits and now we're going to check the power to the ad mega so that's great we have five volts out from the 7805 so it should be correct but Let's double check and you start on this side. You count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the VCC in and straight over from that you have leg 22. That's ground, let's see. And we have five volt and the right polarity. So now we're gonna put in that mega and the display and see what we can look at and we do the final power up we are put everything in place uh, if you when you put in the at mega double check you put it in the right direction so you don't burn the microcontroller and it's on we have backlight and we can't see anything you have a 10k pot uh, potentiometer up here that's the contrast setting for the display so let's see if we can Get something nice to look at. Uh, look, a bit too much. That's good. And now, the last thing we're gonna trim is the 5K potentiometer down here. There's a TP test point, minus positive, and we are supposed to measure DC voltage. We're gonna put it down there, and it's also printed on the PCB. 3.16 volts, that's the voltage you want to have so we do not have that uh, let's see if we can adjust it other way oh, three point three point one six come on This is multi-turn potentiometer, so you can turn it a lot of turns. Oh, it's sensitive. Come on. Oh, well, there's nothing strange about it. Let's see. When it drops down, where are you? 3.16 yeah now I don't have any inductors lying around but I have some capacitors so let's see we have a test button down here which you can choose capacitor 0 0.3 there's nothing connected and inductor and then we have uh, electrolytic capacitor CE you have to put on the right side below 500 microfarad above 500 microfarad and then back to the capacitor let's see if i have something lying around here yes just grab one 
I will not do a full review testing it with a bunch of components. I will just choose one randomly. Let's see which one it is. A 22. Let's see if it works. Down it goes. And capacitor. Oh, sorry. 23.1. It's supposed to be 22. No, not so bad. And you see, it's <laughs> nicely sensitive. Let's see if we can take some of it. Dig in the bag. And we have another value just for checking. And it's a 75. Let's see, 73, 72, yeah, works nicely. So the big difference between these two is, is for larger values and for diodes and transistors and stuff like this. This is really good for low value capacitors and inductors and electrolytic capacitors. So that's that. Surprisingly, my first build with no problems or almost no problems. So. Take a look at this if you need something to check uh, small values and it's between 10 and 50 euros, something like that. So quite cheap kit and well, good luck and see you later.